Welcome to worship. Today in our worship, we hear the story of how Jesus began calling his disciples to him, how John the Baptist recognised Jesus as the Christ, and we think about how we can find Jesus in our lives today. Let us pray. O God, you called us by name to come, and we respond with delight and gladness. In joyful obedience, we come to worship you. Rising out of the depths of despair, we gratefully gather for worship. In joyful hope, we come to worship our loving God. Our God has given us a new song of praise to sing to our awesome God. In joyful trust, we come to worship our God. Amen. A reading from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of destruction, out of the sticky mud. He stood me on a rock and made my feet steady. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many people will see this and worship him. Then they will trust the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, lover of the earth and its people, unfettered spirit, giver of gracious gifts, you are present among us. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in all we touch, in all we meet, you are present among us. As bearers of your image, we come to be reshaped. Dependent on your mercy, we ask to be made new. For the right roads, we avoided travelling, and the kindly words we refused to share. For the false gods who received our worship, and the true selves we have starved of love. God, by your grace, forgive us. For the hidden hearts we have held too tightly, and the promises which we never kept, for the careless use of our time and money, and the lame excuses we should never have made, God, by your grace, forgive us. For all we should be, and all we can amend, God, in your love, renew us. For all you have in store for us, and all you may demand of us, God, in your love, prepare us. For the life of the world, and the love of its people, God, in your love, commit us. Let us hear and believe these words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Glory to the Creator who gives us life. Glory to Jesus, whose love remakes us. Glory to the Spirit, companion on our journey. Glory be to God. And now we pray aloud in the words Jesus taught his followers while on earth, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and for evermore. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 49 verses 1 to 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel in whom I will display my splendour. But I said, I have laboured to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due to me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. 
And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and gather Israel to himself, for I am honoured in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength, he says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who has despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see you and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Our second reading is John 1, verses 29 to 42. Jesus, the Lamb of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came, baptising with water, was what he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his te this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who had sent me to baptise with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning round, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. We are at the very beginning of the known adult life of Jesus. We have left behind the Christmas story and are now about to embark on a journey with Jesus, a journey towards Jerusalem, a journey leading up to the cross and to the empty tomb. On the banks of the River Jordan, we find John the Baptist, surrounded by his own disciples, he recognises Jesus coming towards him. See the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God. This is John the Baptist declaring to one and all, eternal life comes with Jesus. John is saying, this is the one of whom you have dreamt these many years. John uh, the Baptist himself, has been described as one of the last of the great prophets, but he was also a first. The first to recognise that all the prayers of his people had been answered. The first to recognise that all their prophecies had come true. The first to recognise that all their dreams had been realised in Jesus. For John, the Lamb of God was a title, 
a title not to express weakness or helplessness, but rather a title of overwhelming majesty and power. Jesus was God's champion, a champion who would put God's love for the world above everything else. The use of the title, the Lamb of God, sums up the love and the suffering but also the triumph we find in Jesus. It is only now, at this very special point, that God reveals to John not only who Jesus was, but what he was. God has given John the knowledge of the mission he has entrusted to Jesus. It is both wonderful and humbling to note that John claims no greatness or position for himself, he saw himself as nothing and saw Jesus as everything. We can see this in verse 39 John chapter 1. John is standing with two of his disciples when Jesus again passes by. We can hear the excitement in his voice. Look, the Lamb of God! John was passionate. He had come to gather followers, but not for himself. Here is the faith and commitment of a humble believer. All who would listen must be directed to him who is greater than all. Once Jesus emerged on the scene, John had never had any other thought in his mind. So, the two disciples of John left him and follow Jesus. They might well have been a little overawed, a little nervous. After all, John had just given Jesus one of the greatest titles of the age. They walked along, leaving a respectable distance between Jesus and themselves. It was then that Jesus did something which was a great feature of his, something which marks him out to this very day. He turned round and spoke to them. He made it easy to approach him. Jesus opened a door that will never close. This is something for which we can give our eternal thanks. It is always Jesus who makes the first move. No matter the time or the situation when our heart is needing Jesus, Jesus has already found us. Jesus does not let anyone flounder in the search. If you are looking for Jesus, then you are already in his presence. Jesus will not let you wander off. He has already taken the first step. Jesus will not hide himself from us, nor will he keep us at a distance. We go to someone who is waiting for us already. Jesus asks the two now following him, what do you want? Jesus cuts right across the small talk and asks something which hits at the core of all believers. It can be so trivial a question, but it is also one of the most fundamental questions in life. And by the answer the disciples gave, Jesus would know whether they were true followers or not. What do you want? Their answer could indicate that they were looking only to engage in a dry academic conversation. This is how the scribes and the Pharisees spent their time. More interested in polishing their arguments, less interested in loving God or their neighbours. The disciples likewise might be interested only in themselves, with others there simply as servants or as part of an audience. Their answer might reveal that they were ambitious and self-seeking, desperate to rise up the social ladder, keen on outward symbols, but lacking the envision and the enthusiasm for anything else but their own personal desires. Perhaps their answer might reveal that they were zealots, 
zealots looking for a political leader or a military commander, looking for someone who would rid the country of the hated Romans, someone who would, could seize earthly power and make their country the greatest nation on earth. Those who got in their way would be treated with contempt. Could it be that their answer showed them as humble people of prayer? Were the disciples walking quietly and reverently searching for God? Were they gently following to find out what God's will was for them? Or indeed, were they simply puzzled, slightly bewildered souls seeking a light on the journey of life, desperately, desperately trying to find out if God really did have a plan for them? What do you want? What if we were to be asked that question as we travel along life's highway? No matter how far we have journeyed up to this point, can we ask ourselves still, what do we want out of life? There are some people who would answer security. You would have to suggest that as an ambition, security is not a bad idea. To live in a safe and comfortable place in reasonable health with just about enough money to get by and apart from the inevitable things that come to us all, no real worries about the future. Let's be clear, that's not a wrong ambition. And sadly, millions of people around the world today will never achieve even that. However, we can ask, is that it? Is that the height of our ambitions in life? Is security the reason for our existence? In the last analysis, there are no guarantees in the uncertainty of this life. The slings and arrows of outrageous fortune attack us all. What do you want? In all times and generations, there, were, there are folk who would answer a career, a chance to use their time talents and energies so that they could exert influence in society, so that they could gain prestige at work or at play. They would say that you, they were using the gifts that God gave them to the fool and for the community. Again, that is not a bad aim. And again, there are many people in the world who for all kinds of reasons never get to achieve their true potential. If the service is given to better the lives of other people, then it is a good and worthwhile ambition. However, if the underlying motive is selfish, if the desire is to control, if the end result is simply personal success, then it is not enough. Those ambitions are limited by time and by earthly wishes. What do you want? There are many today who are searching for some kind of peace. They want to be able to live at peace with themselves and with others. There is only one place that true peace can be found and that is with God. We can be successful socially financially, professionally, but if we are living without Jesus to help us to find the way to God, then we, are, then we are still empty. We are still needing to find that inner peace. It is a great sadness that today many people are unaware of the real joy, the ultimate security, that deep peace which is beyond all understanding when they allow themselves to be led by the Lamb of God. For it is then that they would know love, sacrifice and presence, the presence of Jesus in their lives. 
Luke 1, verse 41. The first thing that Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah. Amen. God is the maker and lover of all and in the mystery of God's kindness we are bound to each other and called to serve the earth and its people. So let us now pray for the earth and its people. Let us pray. Open our eyes Lord to the world around us. Show us what we should see but from which we hide our eyes. Show us how people live in this world and the reality of their days. Give us courage to do what you ask and to come and see. Open our eyes, Lord, to the shape of your kingdom. Show us what life could be like if only we could see in wisdom. Show us what we could do with you to change things forever. Give us courage to have a vision and to come and see. Open our eyes, Lord, to the people all around us. Show us what we should see, but what we fail to notice. Show us what people are saying to us and what they long for. Give us courage to be where you are and to come and see. You command us, heavenly God, through your prophet Isaiah, to listen and pay attention, for we are far away from you. Your Son, our Saviour, has been sent as our light in a dark world. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Paint God, you listen to us when we sing our songs, cry our laments, and put our trust in your gracious mercy. Help us delight in your will. Put your law and your help in our hearts, that we may rejoice in your steadfast love. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have called us to be saints together. As we grow in our faith in your body, the church, fill us with your spiritual gifts, that we may not be lacking in zeal or courage. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Lamb of God, John the Baptist proclaimed that you take away the sin of the world. To take away our sin, our selfishness, that we may be your people in a world that needs you more than it can admit. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Open our ears, Holy Spirit, that we may hear you call through the scriptures, the preaching of your word, the singing of your inspired hymns and the praying of our prayers. When we hear you call, may we walk with you as readily as Andrew and Peter. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. And now we bring before you those whom we know need healing, hope and heavenly help. As we name them in our hearts, we ask that they would know your presence with them. O oh God, may our faith and our words stir us to action knowing your will is to bring justice and goodness to all. When we pray, thy will be done, help us to be agents in its doing. Transform us into your arms and feet today. May we be the answers to people's prayers today. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we live our lives recognising that we have been blessed with great abundance. May we live our lives sharing those blessings, offering our gifts to the world so that God's faithfulness and salvation will always be known. And now blessing. As we leave this space, may we remember it is God who chose us before our birth, who calls us and knows us by name who now sends us out into the world to bring light to those in darkness, comfort to those who grieve, hope to those who despair. And so may the blessing of God the Creator, the love of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among us and within us as we seek to do God's will. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day this week and forevermore. Amen.